I'm delighted to uh, be joined by uh, Justin of uh, Udell, and Justin's going to tell us a little bit more about Open Data and his organisation. Great. Hi, Tom. My name is uh, Justin Fitzpatrick. I'm the co-founder and COO of Doodell. Justin, tell us a little bit more about Doodell. Sure. So at Doodle, we're building a more open and connected economy, and one of the key inputs for that is open data. So we're on a mission to build the world's largest source of connected in company information. Um, we bring together authoritative data sources from uh, you know, across uh, the world to create profiles of companies and the people who run it, run them. And our customers use this information to help them find opportunities and mitigate risks. So Justin, what, 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 what's great about open data? What benefits does it bring more generally to the economy and society? Yeah, so I think we're, I think we're living in a, an age now where um, you know, people are kind of defaulting to open. And what I, what I mean by that is that the expectation that people have, whether it's um, you know, of their politicians or of government, is that um, they will be uh, transparent. I think that's probably one of the reasons why we've seen such a strong backlash to some recent events where you know, we have allegations of fake news and um, people not really believing statistics or, or information that's coming out of government. And I think you know, being, being more open and transparent and, and having mechanisms for um, the dissemination of that information is uh, probably the best way that people in society can, can stay informed and we can also hold our, our leaders accountable. In terms of open data, it's growing, it's becoming more important, more popular, it's increasingly more international. What do you think are the next big changes, the next big opportunities for open data? Yeah, so I, I mean, standardization, I think, is a big, is a big thing. Um, you know, we've seen, uh, you know, standards, whether it's, um, you know, ISO certifications or, um, you know, standards across uh, economic regions playing a big role in helping uh, businesses and, and uh, companies to, you know, scale. And so, uh, you know, we've had a number of initiatives now around the world, uh, whether it's in the U.S. or in the United Kingdom uh, or other countries that are sort of embracing the open data movement, but um, I don't think that they're kind of quite as coordinated as they could be. And so by sort of pulling those different initiatives together, laying out, uh, you know, a set of common standards, I think that will allow for greater interoperability between data sets and ultimately expand the scope for what's possible by, by bringing these data sets together. And that's a big part of what we do at Doodle. So when, when did Doodle start to use open data? Was it at the very beginning of the organization or did that come a little bit later on? No, Doodle has, um, has sort of embraced open data right from the start. I mean, it was a, it was a core um, component of how we uh, founded and built the business. So um, we initially started interacting with uh, sources of open, open data from uh, places such as Companies House. We then expanded that to um, other sources of, of UK-based government data, such as the Registries Trust, Gazettes, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, you know that that was very much a part of our mission from the beginning. Uh, one of the big hypotheses that we wanted to test as a business was effectively whether we could make this data sexy. Um, and and what I mean by that is that you know if you know this this information is there and there's a lot of rich insight to be gleaned from it, but um, it needs to be presented in such a way that people actually want to engage with it. And there needs to be an application layer on top of it to help people interpret and understand it. And so that's, that's what Doodle does. So with open data, what, what are the, the kind of immediate benefits which it brings to your organization? I think it provides a foundation for a lot of what we do. So um, you know, Doodle uses other sources of data, not just open data. We work with third-party data providers. We um, generate data ourselves by combining two data sets. Uh, you're often able to extract additional insight, um, which goes beyond the, the inputs of, of either of the, the original two data sets. Um, we also will um, find proprietary sources of information that we, um, we extract and, and bring into the product. So, um, you know, the, these other sources of data very much complement um, the foundation that we often will get from open data. Um, but you know, at, at that basic entity level, um, having an authoritative 
open data set that you can refer back to really helps to improve the level of, of trust and, and credibility that exists around that piece of information. So for Judil, is it a case of um, just bringing in and importing open data from other sources? Or are you actively involved in publishing open data yourself through APIs and other sources? Yes, I mean, we're, we're active participants in the, in the whole open data community and, and open data ecosystem. And so, you know, we're, we're big consumers of, of open data, but we also are big advocates of, of some of the initiatives that are uh, going on within the open data community, such as, um, you know, LEIs, um, which are unique identifiers for companies that are sort of universally understandable. Um, we also open up our product uh, in the form of our API. So we're just in the process now of releasing an update to our API, which makes uh, the information that we provide in Doodle much more accessible to third-party developers so that they can um, you know, take what we've developed and integrate it into other uh, sources and come up with new applications that might benefit people. What, what would be the impact for Doodle tomorrow if open data ceased to exist, if, if government departments stopped publishing it? What, what, would, what would be the effect? I mean, we've already seen this in, in some geographies. So I believe a couple of years ago, Spain decided to, um, you know, to lock down some of the, the information available from their registry. Um, in other countries, they you know, have different uh, regulations and, and laws around um, what the data can be used for. So we obviously have to be careful to comply with whatever local laws exist. So um, there is a tremendous amount of variation now in terms of what is permissible uh, with open data and how much uh, governments or authorities are, are releasing. So, um, you know, this is this kind of, I think, goes back to, um, you know, where I think the, the role of, you know, there's a role for standards to play in, you know, government saying that, you know, making this data freely available is a priority because of the societal good that, um, that can come from uh, making this information more available to people. Cool. Would it be quite disruptive to the products or some of the products that you have if, if certain data sets were, were suddenly shut down or closed? For sure. I mean, yeah, there, there's, no, there's no doubt about that. I mean, um, you know, open data is an is a important input to uh, what we do. I, you know, I don't think it would be the end of our business because, as I mentioned, we um, are able to build and generate a lot of context um, around the companies that we cover via via other sources um, but uh, yeah I think it would be a, a, a blow for for our company in particular but I think the more serious blow would be to society because um, you know the mindset now I think is shifting and we'll continue to see this shift uh, over the next few generations where people view uh, reporting requirements uh, around open data as being a burden to, to really being a benefit for society and ultimately a competitive advantage for governments mm -hmm.